Hello there, this is Tom Meeks again, and we're looking at Moment of Inspiration. This is the second tutorial in our series of base level uh, tutorials talking about how to learn uh, to use Moment of Inspiration. And we're going to continue where we left off in our first tutorial. In our first tutorial, we created a circle and we named it. We customized various things. And now we're going to continue on with that theme by customizing a little bit more. Let's go to Options right down here. Notice it says Screen Browser Position. This is the screen browser. It's the object browser. And right now it's in the adjacent position. If I click inside, that will drop down to this area. Now normally, if you had a bigger screen or high resolution screen and you had your your for, uh, form bigger, that would be a good place for it. But in this particular case, it's not really convenient. So I'm going to move it from there. I can also move it to the opposite side right over here. And again, it's OK, but that's not the way I like to use it. So you can customize this program to be whatever you want. And in my case, I want to put it right back over where it was in the adjacent area and open this object back up. The other thing we can do is put the entire side pane over to the left-hand side. Re ready? OK, now the side panes on the left are drawing areas on the right. I would be comfortable with this, but it's not the way I normally work. So I'm going to put it back to the way I normally work, just so I don't confuse myself too much. So as you can see, you can customize moment of inspiration in a variety of ways to make it just what you want. When we left off, we talked about how important it was to name objects. I'm going to give you another indication of that right now. Remember, we could draw 2D objects under Draw Curve. But if we select this tab, Draw Solid, we can draw a sphere. And I'm going to do that right now. It says pick a center point. We're going to pick a center point right here. Okay, there we go. I've drawn a nice sphere. And that sphere, I'm not going to name at first. And there's a reason for that. I'm going to do something with the circle. I'm going to select the circle. Why don't we select it with the object browser? I'm going to select the circle. It says I'm on the circle. I'm going to extrude that circle by just going, going up with my mouse until it covers the sphere. Now, I can't get to that sphere. Not right now. There's no way for me to select that sphere to do anything with it. Because I've covered it up, there's a not a named object that I can get rid of. So it's real easy to fix that by clicking on the cylinder. See, it's unnamed. And say cylinder. Cylinder 01. Now I have a named cylinder. I can make that named cylinder invisible, and now you can see your sphere again. Well, the first thing we want to do once we get to that sphere is we want to click on the sphere and select it. It's unnamed, and now we're going to call it Sphere 1, okay? All right, so now, now we have all of our objects are named, and I can turn the cylinder back on. And you'll notice that uh, we can't see the sphere. However, we can select the sphere. How do we do it? We come over here. We select the sphere. And watch what happens when I do this. I'm going down here to um, transform. I'm going to take a line. And I'll just come over here and move my mouse up and down. And you'll see that I had selected the sphere, and I'm aligning the sphere. And now I can center the sphere up on the bottom of that cylinder. That's why it is so important to name objects. You can always get to them. You can always manipulate them. So having done that, I'm going to back out, and I'm going to get rid of all of these objects. And I can do that. Let me go to Select, Select. All, set all, and I'm going to hit delete. Now they're all gone. Now I'm going to show you another reason why you really want to uh, have a, a beautiful uh, named system 
So let's go back to our drawing curves. We're going to select a rectangle here, and I'm going to just draw a rectangle right here. All right, there we go. Now, in order to make this more than a rectangle, I need to add more points. I do that with this edit. I'm going to say edit, show points. It says select the object for point display. I select it here, uh, and I say done. And now I have uh, this object has points. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name that, and I'm going to name this frame. Okay. Uh, so now we have this thing named frame, and I'm going to add points to it. See this corner point up here? If you have that turned off and you make a point, it will, and you move a point, it's going to move it with curve, a, a curved surface. We'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to put that right there. Now I'm going to pull this back, and you'll notice that when I pulled that back, the surface was curved. It held things in place, but it, it allowed it to curve. Very often, however, when you want to add points, you want to make a corner point. In this case, I'm going to make a corner point here. I'm going to add another point. I'm going to make a corner point there, here, and here. Now, I'm going to slope this back a little bit, and then I'm going to pull this out. So there we have, let me turn those points off. Here we have a frame, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to use something called Revolve to make a solid object. All right, so let me go to Construct, hit Revolve, and Revolve is going to give me directions. First, select the curve to Revolve. I selected the curve. I said Done. Then it said pick the axis. Now, I'm going to start by picking the axis from the top right here. Now notice every, when I move that to the center, to the origin, it's at the origin on everything. So I click that right there, but now I'm going to drop down to show that I want it to revolve around this axis. There we go. And there's our shape. We have a nice shape now. Uh, and I'm going to go to the 3D view, and we're going to name this shape by clicking out here and then back onto the shape, and we're going to call this shape uh, spool. Okay, we've, we've created a revolved shape, and we're going to rotate this around and kind of look at it for a second. Now, if I wanted to fit this over something, it may be that when I print it out, this bottom circle here is not so good a fit to whatever I want to fit it on. Well, and when I send it to my 3D printer, let me make that invisible for a minute, this does not print. So there's no point in having that be visible on the screen once I make my spool. So I can turn that off and it's no longer visible. However, we want to keep it around, even though it's not visible, and I'll show you why. I'm going to go turn the spool off, turn the frame on, and I'm going to go back to our split. And I'm going to say, well, it was just too tight. I, I, I just need to move this. So I'm going to move this object just a hair. And notice that when I moved that object and made it a little bit bigger, that frame, it made the entire spool bigger. And so uh, now I can get rid of the frame again. And we'll go to our 3D view again. Uh, go to our 3D view again. And you'll notice that we have uh, been able to keep that frame and use that frame again without having to redraw it. If I had just erased that or gotten rid of it, I wouldn't have been able to use it again. So naming objects is very, very important. And uh, let me get up here, go to the split. And we're going to reset everything so it's nice and on the screen. So when we go to our next video, we're all ready to go. So here we have our spool. We have the frame that created it. So we have the frame that created it. We can change that frame in any way. Uh, and, and it's going to be reflected in the spool. Or we can create a new spool 
from a, a frame that's modified from this one. We could copy this one and make another small. It's very, very convenient. We'll talk about that. Uh, I hope this was uh, showed you a little bit about why you should name your objects, because that's the most important point of this tutorial. See you next time.